London is ready. That's right, folks. This is no riddle, no decode to be done here. We're just going to be showing you guys about how one of the largest, most well-known exchanges for trading stocks and other financial uh, products is actually moving to blockchain technology here. And this is something that we've been talking about for a while. We've been waiting for it to occur. And sometimes we forget during a bear market, during a recession, during our favorite crypto is down. We forget what's actually being built out and what's taking place. So without further ado, folks, let's get right on into it. There's, uh, I wanted to show you guys a case though. We have a case of two different realities taking place. We have DeFi, the wild, wild west of DeFi and the crypto space. And then we have the largest institutions in the world on the other side who are moving into this technology and they're trying to do so in a proper way. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. That would be stake.com. The world's largest crypto casino confirms the company was hacked. An estimated 41 million was stolen. Now, the only reason why I know about stake.com is because this is one of the largest uh, sponsors that BitBoy Crypto had, right? So that's the only place that I had actually heard of stake.com. I don't know uh, what the relationship is now, now that, you know, Ben has left BitBoy Crypto and that whole saga. Don't care to get into that. But that's the only reason why I know this platform, which apparently it was the largest crypto casino um, th that we had so far. And now they have been hacked for $41 million. So this is just one of many hacks, this time $41 million. And we continue to see these time and time again, from all this different DeFi, from these bridges, from these swaps, from these protocols that are opened up for hackers and folks are getting exposed. Right. And this is happening way too frequently. And this is a blemish on the crypto space that's finally getting cleaned up. And we cannot let these stories distract us from what is taking place with some of the largest exchanges in the world for stocks getting ready to move in on cryptocurrency. Now, Gary Cardone comments, and that would be Gary, brother of Grant Cardone. You may know him, very well known influencer in the real estate business world. But his brother, Gary Cardone, has gone all in on cryptocurrency DLT technology. I've been fascinated listening to some of his spaces and content as of late. But he says right here, an ex-partner suggested I was an idiot to devote time to blockchain and the digital asset industry, but they won't say a word about this news. LSE Group goes blockchain for digital asset initiative. This is the London Stock Exchange Group. Let's take a look at this article right here from Blockworks. The London Stock Exchange Group's focus is on using crypto technology to improve traditional asset transactions, not on trading crypto assets. So this is about using DLT blockchain technology as the underpinning, the infrastructure to facilitate traditional asset transactions. And so they just announced this. This is breaking here today. The move is expected to make it the first big exchange to widely use blockchain for trading regular financial assets, according to LSEG. And <clears throat> you go on here to read that the LSE group is one of the top names among the stock exchanges of the world, as it is comparable to other big global players like the New York Stock Exchange, Euronext, NASDAQ, and the CME group, right? Lately, the company has been looking into new tech like blockchain to improve the speed, efficiency, and security of financial transactions. So they're getting ready. Uh, they're not focused on creating anything connected to crypto assets. Instead, they aim to use the underlying technology that powers crypto to enhance the transaction process for traditional assets. Now, in the XRP community, there's been this riddle, this uh, meme, whatever you want to call it, in the XRP community about London being ready. And what it's based off of is the financial capital of the world being London and, and basically the banking system being in London. And obviously, New York is, is another one of the main financial capitals of the world. But London has been in the lead, um, you, know, you know, for a long time now, especially in the banking world. And now we're starting to see them lean in first. And we've seen this out of the UK. They've been leaning into digital assets, providing clarity, providing trading, providing staking, providing all these services, you know, uh, providing all the clarity, the rules and the regulations so that companies like Uphold and others that are based out of the UK can offer all these incredible services and products knowing that they're within the law. So that's fantastic to see. But now we have basically the equivalent of, you know, a, a NASDAQ or a New York Stock Exchange. Uh, I don't know if they're the largest. I would assume they're the largest stock exchange in London. Um, but this is the London Stock Exchange Group, and they are moving all in on using DLT blockchain as the underlying technology 
to facilitate traditional asset trading. And it's funny because I just came across this tweet from Neil Hartner. And if you guys aren't already, make sure you guys go follow Neil Hartner. He is a senior staff software engineer at Ripple working on ODL and uh, very, very uh, insightful gentleman here on Twitter. Not just answering our questions on XRP and that, but he put out this tweet. He says, the network, not the tech, is the moat when it comes to financial systems. New York Stock Exchange is 231 years old, NASDAQ 52 years old. They didn't survive by being on the bleeding edge of tech. They just had to reliably evolve, be stable, and good enough to service the network. This is the difference with Ripple and so many others in the space that I see, is they're approaching these folks, these networks, right, Swift and others. And they're saying, listen, we don't care to be competition for you. We just have, we, we do have better tech, but we want to make sure that, you know, you can use this. This can enable the network that you've already built out. We respect that. So we're showing up to the table with a deal that's hard to refuse because the tech is fantastic, but it's also complementary to what you already got going on. And that's been the approach from Ripple and others. And so once again, this whole post here today from the London Stock Exchange Group getting ready to you know use blockchain as the underlying technology for traditional asset trading is what we've been talking about, right? Folks focus on XRP being just for cross-border payments. That's not the case. You could settle a derivative. You could settle uh, anything you want of value over the XRP ledger. And especially now that we're potentially going to be getting hooks and smart contracts and all these other capabilities, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, if you just get a sliver of some of these equities, some of these bonds, some of these other traditional markets, right, along with derivatives and, and cross-border payments being the significant primary proof of concept for XRP and Ripple, but we understand that we can do a lot more. And this shows right here, you know, one of the largest exchanges in the world moving in, and we're going to put DLT technology as the underpinning for how this whole system will work going forward. And this is the future, we've been talking about it, but I wanted to make this quick, simple, short, sweet video to remind the community that during this bear market, have some hope. Not just because we're hoping one day that our XRP goes to 589 and that we were right about our riddle and how we decoded it, but actually looking at what's taking place. The largest institutions and networks in the world are leaning in and some might say going all in on DLT technology. Will XRP get all the money? No, we've never said that. But when you get some of these assets that just get a piece of this settlement, a piece of that pie, we go somewhere fun. I'll let you guys let me know where XRP goes, how much of the traditional stock market will be settled on XRP ledger, if any, maybe not, right? But what's exciting to see is that the big players, the big boys and girls are leaning in, and that is to our advantage for those of us that have taken the time to do our research, get educated, and be able to ride out the storm, ride out these bear markets, ride out the crypto chaos, ride out stake.com and other platforms getting hacked for $41 million today. That's what makes us so strong. We are early, and our time is coming here soon. Just wait. The regulations in the United States are getting set, and once we have that, hopefully, level playing field, uh, regulation set, rules of the road, we're going to be set free and we're going to be going to a market cap in the overall cryptocurrency space. By most estimates, we easily surpass $10 trillion, which is three times what we did in the last bull run, achieving $3 trillion for the overall cryptocurrency market cap. Many conservative expectations and estimates put us well over $10 trillion by 2030 and, and potentially this next bull run, which is set to begin in the next year. So stay strong, stay committed, stay focused, and continue with your education on the investments and the moves that you're trying to make right now. Our community is going to take advantage of this opportunity. We call it the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. And if you appreciate it, make sure we smash it on the way out. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and just head on over to my website, zachrector.com, if you're looking to get in touch. I will see you guys in the next video. God bless you all.